Hello students, hope you all are doing good. I am Anuradha, once again welcome you all in this session and today we will discuss and continue with the chapter control and coordination. In the last session I left with a question for you. I hope you all search the answer. The question was, do the impulses reach to brain also during a reflex action? So the answer is yes. In the reflex action, due to emergency, responses are generated from spinal cord, but all the information reaches to brain also. So before starting, I would like to share that after this session, you will be able to understand control and coordination mechanism in plants, discuss different plant hormones and their importance, understand type of movement shown by plant, learn different hormones in animals and to identify location of glands with the help of diagram. Now today we will start with another interesting topic, control and coordination in plants. As we discussed in last session, animals have a nervous system for control and coordination. But the plants have neither a nervous system nor muscles. Then the question is, how do the control and coordination happens in plants? Do they also respond to a stimuli? Remember the example of touch me not plant, also called as chuimui. It curls the leaf when we touch. So yes, plant show responses. Now another question arises, is there control and coordination in plants also? And why it's required? To find the answer, Think about the growth in plants. You all must have seen the pulses. Pulses are seeds. Do they grow when they are kept in boxes in your kitchen? The answer is no. A seed starts germinating in favorable conditions only. The roots go down in the soil and the shoot grows upward. The plant grow into a maximum and then the growth stops. There are seasonal plants, flowers, fruits that can be seen in particular seasons only. So obviously there is a proper system also in plants which is required to control all these activity. Now we will discuss all in detail. The plants also show the movement. Yes, and this is in two ways. First, which is dependent on growth. Like germination in seeds where the roots show movement down the soil and the shoot in air and another one independent of growth like in touch me not plant where plants show instant movement without the growth. Again the movement in plants can also be divided into tropism and nastic. In tropic movement the movement is direction dependent and it again divided into first phototropism. So as the name suggested, this tropism is dependent on movement of sun. This is the movement towards the sunlight like movement of plants towards the sun. Second, geotropism or gravitropism. So this is the movement towards or away from gravity. So again the geotropism divided into positive geotropism and negative geotropism. Positive means the movement of the plant towards the gravity like downward movement of roots and negative means the movement of plant part against the gravity. Another one is chemotropism. So this is the growth navigated by the chemical stimulus. For example, the growth of pollen tube towards ovule. Another one is hydrotropism. So this is as the name suggested, growth towards the water. For example, growth of plants towards higher relative humidity level. So the tropism is the movement of plant in which the direction of movement is guided by the direction of external stimulus causing the movement. Now the nastic movement, it is not dependent on direction. 
like movement of touch me not plant or movement shown when a bird opens to a flower. The nastic movement is the movement in which direction of the movement is not guided by the external stimulus. The control and coordination system in plant is not that much complicated as in animals. As the animals have a nervous system and endocrine system for control and coordination, while plants do not have a nervous system, but they have hormone system. So for control and coordination, plants have different kind of hormones. Here, we will discuss the main plant hormones. But first, we will discuss what are hormones. Plant hormones, also known as phytohormones, are organic substances that regulate the plant growth and development. Plant produces a wide variety of hormones including auxin, gibberellin, abscisic acid, cytokinins, salicylic acid, ethylene, jasmonates, bacinosteroids. But here we will discuss the main plant hormones and these are auxin, gibberellin, cytokinins, ethylene and abscisic acid. So we will start one by one. First we will discuss about auxin. So this hormone is synthesized at shoot tip. It helps the cell to grow longer and involved in phototropism also. Next is gibberellin. So this is the hormone which is responsible for the growth of the stem. Cytokinin is the hormone which promotes the cell division present in the greater concentration in fruits and seeds as the growth is more required here. The next hormone is ethylene and this is the hormone which is present in gaseous state. So this hormone help in the ripening of fruits. So many time it happens when the fruit is unripened, the ethylene injections are given to ripe the fruit. The hormone that all we discussed are the growth hormone but another hormone is here which is opposite. So the hormone is abscisic acid and this is the hormone which instead of promoting the growth it inhibits the growth. This is the hormone which causes wilting of leaves and also known as stress hormone. It helps in seed dormancy also. So the sometime question arises that why we required to inhibit the growth. So as you know all the fruits get ripened and they should detach from the plant. So a inhibition is required after a proper system. So now we can see that all these hormones help in control and coordination in plant. Again hormones play an important role in control and coordination in animal also. So next we will discuss about the animal hormones or endocrine system. So before discussing the endocrine system we have to discuss a bit about gland also. What are these glands? So these glands are specialized organs which produces hormones. So these hormones are released from endocrine glands. Basically there are two type of glands the endocrine gland and the exocrine glands. The endocrine glands are ductless and they release their products that is hormone directly into the bloodstream while the exocrine gland have duct system for example sweat glands. So here we will discuss about the endocrine glands only. So these are the glands which secrete their products that is the hormone into the blood. So we will discuss about these glands and also the hormones in animals. So first we will start with thyroxine hormone and this is the hormone which is secreted by the thyroid gland. This gland is located in the neck or the throat region. It regulates the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, proteins and this is important because deficiency of this hormone can cause a disease which is known as goiter. So you must have heard about the iodide salt. Why the salt or why iodine is required? 
So iodine is a mineral which is essential part of thyroxin and deficiency of this can cause coiter. So next we will discuss about the growth hormone. This is the hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland. This gland is also known as master gland because it controls the activity of many endocrine glands. This gland is located in midbrain. This responsible for growth and development. Next we will discuss about adrenaline hormone. So this hormone is secreted by the adrenal gland and these glands are located just above the kidneys. This hormone regulates the blood pressure, heartbeat and also the carbohydrate metabolism. The hormone is also known as emergency hormone. So before discussing about the next hormone insulin, you must have heard about diabetes. What is diabetes? So basically this is the disease which causes due to high sugar level. So why this sugar level increases in the body? Why this disease diabetes occurs? So the reason is insulin. So this is the hormone which is released from the pancreas gland. This gland is located in the lower abdominal region below the stomach. This hormone is responsible to regulate the blood sugar level. Deficiency of this hormone can increase the blood sugar level in body and it causes the disease known as diabetes. So now we will discuss about sex hormones. Both male and female have different type of sex hormones. Males have testosterone. This hormone is released by testis. These testes are located in genital area. So the hormone is responsible for the changes associated with puberty. Females have estrogen hormone. This hormone is released by ovaries. The ovaries are located in lower abdominal area. So the endocrine system along with nervous system helps in control and coordination in animals. So let's summarize all content. In this session, we discussed control and coordination is also important in plants. Animals have nervous system and endocrine system, while plants have no nervous system but only hormonal system for control and coordination. Plants show two types of movement, growth dependent and growth independent. Movement is also divided into tropism and nesting. Auxin, gibberellin, cytokinins, ethylene all are growth hormones while abscisic acid is the hormone that inhibits growth. Ethylene is a gaseous hormone. Deficiency of insulin can cause a disease condition known as diabetes. So there is a question for all of you. A boy had a good habit of waking early in morning. He does physical activities and had healthy diet. He used to take his meals on time. But at the age of 13, when he examined medically, he was found to be diabetic. What can be the cause? So with this question, we end the session. Thanks you.